Okay, so hopefully you got something from lesson one and you're ready to move on to the next part. So I've designed this lesson to be very similar to lesson one, just a little bit more challenging. With our right hand, the picking pattern starts off the same, but then it varies ever so slightly. And in the left hand, the, um, the melody is still somewhat there, but what makes the left hand more difficult is in lesson one, we just used one finger at a time. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna be holding a finger down on a note, or a string, whilst using our other fingers for other notes on other strings. So that's gonna be a little bit more difficult, okay? So make sure that you're comfortable with playing lesson one before you move on to lesson two. And if you're ready, we'll get started with the lesson. So for this picking pattern, for our second lesson, it starts off the same way. So we have this. But then we're going to continue descending with our annular middle index. Sounds like this. Okay, so we're gonna start off the same way. descending picking patterns. I'm going to play that together for you, nice and slowly. So that's the pattern we'll be using with our right hand today. Now the left hand also, um, it does something a little bit different. Uh, it's gonna pretty much use the same notes. Uh, we're gonna start this time with finger three at fret three, okay? So we're gonna start here. Uh, and we're gonna be playing the same notes, the G, the F sharp, the open E, um, but a little bit quicker than the previous lesson. Let me play it for you, nice and slow. Again, finger three. So finger two. And then the open. So practice that um, for a little bit. Get used to it, get comfortable with that. And then when you're ready, look at the next part, um, which I'll play for you now. This is gonna be a little bit more difficult. Um, we're going to be keeping finger one down on fret one of string two, uh, which is note C. We're going to be keeping that down uh, for this section, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Picking hands, the same thing. We're going to come down to string five, like we did in the previous lesson. Um, and we're going to be playing the same melody on top, uh, but again, it's keeping this finger down that's going to make things difficult. Let me just play it for you. So the melody was the same, um, but we're changing up the harmony by playing note C in there. Um, so it kind of sounds more like a chord progression. Um, now, a couple of things to remember. When you're holding finger one down, it's vital to make sure your thumb's in the correct position and you're arching your finger over so you play with the tip of the finger. There's With the guitar, there's not much room for error. Like, 
luckily with this classical guitar, the neck's a bit wider, so I have a little bit more room to play with. Uh, but certainly on a steel strung guitar and electric, very difficult to have your finger on, say, string two, but arch it out of the way so we can play string one and it rings in clear. So very often, certainly for the first few lessons, when I teach students, you're going to get this sound. And that's purely the finger just leaning back ever so slightly and just touching the open E string, string one. Uh, so the thumb is very important. If your thumb's up here, your thumb's over to the side, um, it's going to lean your hand back, it's going to tilt it back. You want to pop this wrist out so it's nice and bent, thumb roughly around the middle of the neck, um, and then just arch that finger over, okay? And again, as I said in the previous lesson, nails have to be short to do this. Have your finger close to the fret if possible. If you're too far away, you'll get a buzzing rattle sound, okay? So that's staying down. Now with my other fingers, instead of using finger three, I actually opt to use finger four. Uh, it's less of a stretch, okay? You could use finger three, by all means, but because you're stretching more, there's more chance that your finger could kind of lean back a little bit. And also, you want to get used to using pinky, finger four. A lot of guitar players, they try and avoid using it, and you want to be comfortable with using the pinky as you are with every other finger, okay? Um, so I actually recommend, even though it's very early on with your guitar playing, use your pinky as soon as possible, okay? So I use my pinky for the G at fret three, and then I use my finger two for the F sharp, and then off to the open. So let me play that again. So let me put those two together. Itself, but we want to take it a little bit further and just like with lesson one we're going to go down to string D same picking pattern with the right hand uh, but again our left hand's doing something different uh, we're going to have to hold a note down just to make it more chord like um, less like an exercise um, so I'm going to have finger two on what we call note A which is fret two of string three and then our third finger will um, come into fret two. Now this is going to be a slightly different pattern to what we have been doing. Um, same with lesson one, it was the same thing. For the D chord, I felt like we needed to have something a bit different. So it sounds more musical, more like a melody and less like an exercise. So I'm going to hold finger two down. Now the same thing with the previous chord, we want to arch that finger over. We want this. And not this. Again, very little wiggle room. It's just a millimetre here or there, you know, depending whether you get a clear sound or a muted. Okay, so same technique as I spoke about earlier. Pop that wrist out, tip of the finger, make sure that this knuckle is nice and bent, and this is the, uh, this is the pattern. play that for you again. So I'm starting off with finger two and three, okay? Both on fret two. Then take away finger three and then put it back again. 
and I'll play that up to speed. So when you piece that together, it's very musical, has a nice melody to it, but it's really all about the using that picking technique in the right hand. And also having you play something that sounds musical early on in your guitar journey. Um, so let me just play this one more time all the way through, okay? started with and I'd like to finish on fret 7 just because it sounds nice uh, for you it's hard to see because of uh, with classical guitars you don't have fret markers on the front I have them on top so I can see where fret 7 is um, but yeah just finish on fret 7 makes it a bit more interesting, uh, a nicer ending. One other thing is that very last part I'm doing what we call a rallentando, which means you gradually slow down. So I hope you got something from this lesson. Uh, once you get comfortable with this, uh, then move on to lesson three.